All right, international news. And the first thing is Uber's quarterly loss of 5.2 billion. Oh, good Lord. Now, here is a company that, uh, you know, investors are going crazy. People are saying, wow, this is going to be the next revolutionary like uh, Amazon, or like Facebook. So the, the good side is, yes, they grew 14%, uh, got a revenue of 3.2 billion. But the bad news is last year they had 842 million loss. That's nearly 1 million. But this year they got 5.2 billion. So from where you nearly had lost 1 billion, now you're losing five times. So I don't seem to understand how is it the industry folks, the investors still have faith in this company. Like, you know, I come from a time, a phase where if you are making loss month after month, after month after month, and then it goes for years, you know, people would stop believing in you. Uber is losing. You're talking of such a huge amount, 5.2 billion. How do they expect it to, you know, revive itself? And then you have the chief financial officer, Mr. Nelson Chai, who was quoted saying, we will continually invest in aggressively in growth. We want to be in healthy growth. And this quarter, we have made good progress towards that direction. What healthy growth? What bloody progress? You have lost $5.2 billion. Just imagine the staggering amount. And you're still talking about healthy growth. In fact, they have even cut down jobs, 400 jobs from its marketing team of 102,000 people, 1,200 people. And they are saying that we are improving efficiency in cost. So, and on top of that, they are also investing in Uber Eats, which kind of grew 140%. Uh, Uber Freight Services, which focuses on trucks and shippers, which saw its revenue grow tenfold. So you're expanding in so many different directions and uh, you're still having a loss. How much more can they take? When will the bleeding stop? Now you had 1 billion loss last year, nearly 1 billion, but this time you have 5.2 billion. Are they going to discontinue until it goes 10 billion loss, 20 billion loss? When? So if you have invested in this, I would just say, take your money out, get out, invest in something where the losses are less, or at least where at least you can see some amount of revenue. This kind of hope for the future is a very, very dangerous trend. And uh, you'll eventually end up losing everything. That's at least my prediction, but then I can be wrong. Next one, uh, Canadian housing bubble crash. This is by narcity.com. Bloomberg Economics released data suggesting that the Canadian house bubble will pop and it's going to pop very soon. Um, it's like countries like New Zealand and Canada have this problem. Now, what is the problem? Is they have a very high price to income ratio. So they're not earning very much, but the price of housing is really abnormally high. And the reason for this high uh, is because there are many buyers. Now, who are the buyers? They're not local people. They are foreigners from outside who come down to the country and uh, invest money or they buy the property. The same thing is happening with Thailand. At the moment, you have Chinese, your people from abroad, the foreigners who are buying, scooping up these houses because they feel the land or the uh, house is cheap. The local Thai people cannot afford it. And uh, that is why they are suffering. So in order to make it uh, you know, available to the locals, uh, the governments have introduced taxes and in some cases like in New Zealand they are they have ban or put a ban or freeze to overseas investors purchasing the same thing over here in Thailand uh, you can buy property yes but you need to have a local Thai presence or Thai partner or whatever so you know if you are an investor or if you're local Canadian I think it's good news for you if you have not purchased a house however if you've already purchased a house and you are hoping to sell it, well, you're going to have some problems in the future. So this is going to affect global markets as well, because people with money, well, they don't just invest in their country, they invest in other places as well. And um, international news, this one, uh, the last one is Apple slips to the fourth place, which is not a surprise because I used to wonder, has Apple, you know, lost its marbles? Do they think so low of its consumers that you can keep bullshitting with stupid, you know, sub 
branded products, you know, sub value and overcharging other people. Uh, well, they were capitalizing on the fact that, uh, well, Apple fanboys love Apple so much that you can even charge people for a stand, a thousand dollars just for the bloody stand, which never made sense. But I guess there are a couple of idiots who are there and overpriced products. So now it is uh, at um, the fourth highest. Uh, it's uh, the first one is uh, Samsung, Huawei, Oppo, Oppo, which is a Chinese brand, which is very popular here in Thailand. They're doing very well. Apple is number four. If it doesn't correct itself, it's going to go down even further. Apple now accounts, Apple's iPhone accounts for half of Apple's overall revenue, which used to be the highest. Now, Apple Watch is supposed to be the highest. My thoughts is, uh, these are my thoughts. How many times would you keep upgrading your phone? How many times would you keep buying a new phone year after year, month after month? I mean, if you can get the same features from a phone at half the price, you're talking of a thousand dollars bracket. Okay. So if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a phone, why not get everything? Why not you get the best? So why should you go for an Apple, which doesn't give you the best, but charges you the best in terms of the pricing? The second question is, what's the point of having features when you can get more features uh, from any other brand? And last, if not the least is, I mean, why is Apple still insulting the intelligence of its users? People who went for an Apple iPhone when it just launched where we are going for the best, you are going for the latest uh, invention or whatever, the features. Now what they're doing is they're just giving you bit by bit by bit. So every year you can keep spending more. And then they have this grandiose presentation where they show and this new thing and this new thing. And people are like, who are you trying to fool, man? Android or these other uh, competitors gave me these features four years ago, three years ago. So, you know, I'm not surprised at Apple going down to the fourth place. Um, I personally look at Apple as after Steve Jobs, it has only gone back to us. They only try to make money. What Steve Jobs tried to do is he removed all the excess products, all the excess models and brought down to four, four major companies. But Tim Cook came and changed everything that Apple had introduced from the pen to reintroducing so many different models and so many different brands because they just want to make money. That is why all of Apple's accessories, they don't last more than a few weeks or months. And you have so many accessories for just one bloody model. So many dongles, you know, the dongle fiasco, which is still going on. So I look at Apple as taking advantage of the faith that people have in their brand. And I, I personally, who was an Apple fanboy, began to hate Apple. Seriously. So let me know your thoughts.